I'm going to have to re re now let's reset this for this initial phase. It's out over a sixteenth of an inch right now. We're going to almost a full blade width. And probably we'll have to back it off once we get rid of the high ridges of the stroke length. Or sooner, actually, feel the resistance. jigging so uh, you still have to pay attention you can still like start away from the edge or you can still start here and skip uh, get a good reference a good start you can see how it's taking that down already nicely actually it's quite possible if you have a planer wide enough you could stick this in the planer now I'd probably top it off a little bit smoother but it's basically flat enough and has enough support that you could run it through the planer. And that, I don't know what that take, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get it to this spot on a fairly big board. So um, you don't have to worry about having a giant joint. But I think we're gonna try and take this one down all the way to thickness by hand. We'll see how that goes. Then when you get a plane this long, you can start checking it. Don't have to bother with the straight edge, so it's high through here. changing direction. It's going to turn out badly there. Let's see. exemplar of this but you get a little longer blade life if you lift on the return stroke um, you can lift it just slightly you can lift it just slightly on the return just tilt it slightly rather than dragging it back uh, and I've watched people who are proponents of this and even they don't do it all the time.
So I'm going to use the four plane in this case. I don't always uh, do that. I think it'll be a little simpler. The shape of the blade is intermediate between the jack plane and the joiner plane, which would be the next plane. So I'm going to take out some of these ridges left from the jack plane. Hopefully I'll make it a little easier going for the joiner. And the greater length of this plane uh, will help flatten. And it's mostly helping to get rid of some of the tear out left from the jack plane. Fully, but mostly. Now in this case I'm changing direction mostly to help reduce some of the tear out. can be used along the length of the board as well, which I might make a few strokes. Before I switch over to the uh, joiner plane. down the board uh, parallel to the green compensate for some of the cross board uh, ridges start knocking those down so generally uh, the jack scrub are used diagonally, uh, sometimes cross grain, rarely with the grain uh, in flattening board. The four plane can be used diagonally or with the grain or for other uses. Sometimes it's used as a joiner plane itself um, and it's set up that way. But the joiner for the most part, uh, is used with the grain. You get a very wide board, you can use the cross grain. Um, and sometimes you have to, just to get thinness in that direction. But generally the turner plane is a transition. Working with the grain and the planes after that will be worked with the grain. And you see, we're having so far pretty good success, not having heavy duty tear out and eliminating the tear out caused by the scrub and the Jack plane.
sweat on that one. After a while, you tend to take it for granted. But uh, almost everybody struggles with it, actually. Get this section straightened out here. Actually, the plane's pretty nice. The plane's almost like pine here. Or a nice mahogany. Still high in the middle. Partially you work uh, on an area that's just basically arm's reach where you don't have to lean out too far or lean back too far to make a stroke. It's a complete stroke and you'll work in that area. Um, here a lot of times I'm finding high spots and so I'm focusing on the high spot and if that's more than uh, an arm's reach, a plane stroke, then I'll work on it at a plain strong length and then move my position and then finish off by connecting uh, long shavings. I think we'll move on to the joiner. Generally, I tend to work from the far side, from my far reach, and work backwards. Generally, certainly not cast in stone. I did already adjust this. It looks like it's pretty much what I want. And you can see it's jigging. It's only hitting the high spot, which is good. It, um, I might set it a little bit deeper just so I don't have to go back and forth so much. But eventually that will cause me a great deal of work because that'll be a pretty heavy shaving. hammer a lot of times just because it's just more definite this one doesn't have any mass uh, so I gotta move the blade which doesn't want to move easily under the wedge I might use a bigger mallet but this gives me a more specific um, reading. No, what to do for Good. And basically every time you adjust the blade on one of these, you want to tap the wedge a couple times because it tends to loosen the wedge.
the other side of that board needs a little more attention. section likes to be playing going that direction for sure well this is pretty close to being ready to go to smoothing planes. You can back this off a little bit. Make another run. We'll go right to the smoothing plane. So years ago I discovered that uh, using more than one 
smoothing plane actually made things go a little faster. Um, then I discovered if I used a slightly bigger smoothing plane to prepare the surface for the final smoothing plane even better. Make it easier. Everything will be flatter. And it'd save a little bit on the blade of the final smoothing plane, which had to be very precisely sharp in order to get rid of some of the tear out. But let's go a little deeper here. Yes. Yeah, and the interlock green we talked about really has turned out not to be a problem. I'm leaving some tracks as my blade set kind of deep. All right, this uh, overall is pretty good, but. We got some uh, tear out which survived um, from the earlier planes. Some of this can get cut off. It's questionable how much we'll save down here. Down here with the split. Uh, some tracks left. Um, surface could be a little flatter. So it could spend another half hour probably finessing this a little bit and getting it but uh, no disasters tear out um, the planes are working pretty well going against the grain on these knots uh, so that's pretty nice it's a nice pretty piece of wood uh, this small plane works fine here it gets in some of the spots that the other plane won't get into Debating how much uh, how much to spend on it really at this point. Certainly, uh, with the exception of some of these um, uh, bigger tear outs, which sometimes uh, are okay in the final on these more rustic boards. Um, it's certainly you could go to the sander here at 180 or, or 220 really at this point or you can mark it and flip it over uh, and do the second side by hand if you don't have a planer that's big enough 